Hey, so in this video, I want to show you about the new outline shader. Um, so the outline shader will allow you to quickly add outlines into your scene in Unity. It's designed for Unity URP, and it is an outline render pass. So it works on the actual screen. It doesn't work, you know, as a material. And so you don't need to add any additional materials to your object if you're interested in getting it. Now, I know this scene looks really simple, and we're working with a really simple scene just to highlight and showcase the outline shader itself. So um, that's on purpose. And uh, I hope that it's okay for you. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And you can see some detailing here around the outline. First, I'll show you how to actually add it. Um, so it's pretty simple to add. Uh, normally, when you're adding a render feature in URP, you're going to add it to your universal renderer data. But for this asset, I thought it might be a little bit easier if you tried adding it using an in -queue render pass instead on your main camera. So all you have to do once you import the asset is jump to your main camera and then click Add Component and then look for in -queue Outline Pass. And once you add that, you can see here in my scene, it starts rendering immediately, but you'll actually also need to go to a global volume and enable an outline volume settings. If you don't have this already, you'll need to go to add override. Let me just remove it and show you. You'll need to go to add override, uh, Oka software, and then outlines. You can see it doesn't turn on immediately and that's because you need to enable the outline thickness. And so once we bring this outline thickness up, you can see the outlines turning on. Now, these are where you'll access the different options for your outlines. Because it is a volume, it works using the volume system. So if you add other local volumes, you can seamlessly interpolate between different local volume settings based on where your camera is located. Um, some of the basic options, these are kind of shared across these different settings, are the outline color. And so you can tint the outline color, whatever option you, you would like. The outline thickness, so you can decide how thick or thin you want the outlines to be. The edge threshold, so you can see as we increase the threshold, the outlines kind of go away at uh, lower confidence areas. So we're less confident that there should be an outline here. And so the outline goes away earlier there when we're raising the edge threshold. When the edge threshold is set to one, there are no outlines. So just keep that in mind. You might want to keep it like really high if you want only the finest sort of outlines. And you can also choose to exclude the skybox or include the skybox. So you can see a little darkening around the edge here when exclude the skybox is disabled. You can also, um, it automatically scales the outline width based on your resolution. So this makes it really easy to make sure that you're getting the same width outlines regardless of what device you're rendering to. So if you're designing on a 1080p baseline, um, you'll just have this resolution scaling sent to 1080p. And then when it is rendering on a, for example, 1440p or 4K monitor, then it'll automatically scale up or down the outlines um, so that the visual size is the same. And then this frame rate option is more relevant to the offset texture, which is down here. Um, so we'll kind of get to that in a little bit. And then we have these different options for your depth, normals, luma, which is like brightness and color options. So these all affect how the depth, uh, object normals, um, the brightness of the screen at that point and the color of that screen at that point, how they affect our decision whether or not there is an outline there. And then you can also scale it based on distance. So you can have the outlines get bigger over distance or smaller over distance. And you can also have them fade out over distance or fade in over distance. And then you can use these grazing angles to reduce the prevalence of some artifacts that you might see when you have a particularly flat surface uh, at a grazing angle. And so let's see if we can get this to um, show up here. So if we take a cube. And we scale that up a little bit. Okay, great. And we'll just rotate it slightly. So we have a grazing angle here. And let me turn off the sphere. <clears throat> I 
All right, great. Well, we can't even get the grazing angle issue to occur, so that's good. Um, but if you were seeing it occur, it would be that essentially like there's an outline appearing right around here um, and it's very thick and it goes from like, you know, kind of along the surface of the object and you would use these grazing angle options to help attenuate that. And then you have the offset texture and the paper texture. So the offset texture basically takes this outline and it'll kind of squiggle it around a little bit so that it looks more hand drawn. I've included a few different texture options in the asset itself that you can use, um, you know, with the asset to, uh, you know, add this effect. So I'm just going to bring it up pretty high and you can see that the effect is there. And uh, when I'm holding my mouse down, you can see that the effect is changing over time, right? Um, and so that's where the frame rate comes into play. So we want this to move really quickly. We could set this frame rate to 60. Obviously that just kind of looks like jitter. Um, and so you would maybe want to use a smaller frame rate so that it feels kind of hand-drawn. That's why the default there is 6. You can control other options here too, like the scale, the speed, and whether or not it should include the skybox. Now this approach isn't always 100% perfect, right? You'll see some artifacts and maybe sometimes that outline won't be present at all. Um, that's just an artifact of how the design sort of works for this approach. Um, but overall, it looks nice. Um, and so as long as you're not using a texture strength that's too high, it'll look good. So just kind of keep that in moderation. And then for the paper texture, you're going to want to be subtle here as well. So this paper texture, I'll bring it all the way up so you can see it, basically applies this sort of paper look. And that's as a post process. So, um, you know, I think that it's nicest when you use it kind of subtle. It'll also affect the intensity of the outlines a little bit too. And so you can just kind of bring that in just a little bit to add just a little bit of texture to your scene. Um, if you're not already using like a triplanar um, paper sort of material um, and kind of like a small teaser, <laughs> we're gonna have a new shader coming out soon that will have this sort of triplanar texture, papery sort of feeling baked into the material itself. So you don't necessarily need to use this paper texture, but it's nice to have in case you uh, don't want to modify your existing materials. And then you can also blur these outlines. There's not a ton of use cases for this, but I thought it best to include it as well. And basically it lets you kind of soften the outline a little bit. Obviously once we get to like a higher number, I don't know when you would use this, but at smaller values, it can help to slightly take that edge off on some of these corners. So you can see when it's disabled, it's like maybe a little bit too sharp of an edge. And so you can soften it up just a little bit if you want a slightly softer um, outline with that. And you can also add noise to this as well, um, which will kind of soften up the edge. And so that's the blur. And then you have this last option, which is a preview option. And it just lets you see kind of the underlying debug visualization of where the outlines are going to be drawn. And so you can see like here when it's red, you'll see it as red. If it's white, you obviously can't see it. So when you're in that debug visualization, maybe use a color that uh, you can see. Cool. So I'll include a link to this asset uh, in the description below. Uh, if you have any questions about how to use it or any concerns about, you know, oh, it's not working or I'm having trouble, just let me know. Um, you can jump into Discord or shoot me an email and I'm happy to help. So thanks for watching and I hope that you're able to use this asset to make your game everything that you hope it can be. Cheers.